that's how I do it. I do it on what feels good to me when I'm out setting up the shot. I'm like, like right in a certain place. Oh, that feels good right there. It's almost like the camera just clicks into a, a, a groove on the tripod. There is no groove, but it just feels like that. I, I was with a group of uh, photographers in Durango, Colorado. Some friends of mine live there, and they're like this photography group. And I went to their meeting. All they talked about and they had coffee was all like the technical details of their digital cameras. They're like, you know, mine has a 24 megabyte sensor and does this and this and this. I'm like, you, I don't care what camera I have. You could give me a shoebox with a hole in the front and a little bit of film and I could take a pretty good shot with that. My day job, although I'm doing it at night right now, is a meteorologist forecaster for KFES TV. And I've actually been there since the late 80s. So I've been, a, I've been there a long time. I've done almost every shift over the years, but right now I'm working mornings and noon occasionally. But my real love has, over the last 20 or 30 years, has become landscape photography. And I always tell people that don't know that I'm a photographer, I say, well, I'm pretty good as a TV weather person, but I'm really good as a photographer. You just don't know it because most people don't know I'm a photographer, but that's what I do best, really. I mean, I'm probably okay as a TV weather person, but as a photographer, I'm probably a lot better. I had a life-changing experience where my wife and I got divorced. And I was kind of sad and lonely and bored. And so I just went out west and started camping and I took a little camera with me and I started doing photography. And I would get back and this is in film days, obviously. I get the film back and I was like, well, those are kind of nice, but they're they're kind of boring. They're like taken in the middle of the day. The light's really boring. It's clear skies. I'm going to go back and I, I'm going to try to do better this time. So I'd go back to the same spot and maybe go out at, at sunrise and get the shot. Or, oh, it's going to get stormy. There's some thunderstorms and hike out to this spot when the thunderstorms were in the background. Photography became more and more of what I was doing. Like I wouldn't go somewhere and just do a little photography. I would go somewhere specifically to do the photography. And eventually it became like this all consuming thing where that's what I do with all my vacations now. As I find some new spot out in the West, in the Southwest and the Northwest, or maybe in the Great Lakes, where I specifically go there for a week or two just to do photography and explore it. I don't know, it kind of just morphed from being something I liked to something that I was really seriously pursuing. My one frustration, I guess, with photography over the years is I always thought if you were good enough at something, you could maybe monetize it or make a living doing it. But it turns out there's almost no market for uh, landscape photography. All right, let me recompose it a little bit. Everybody's got a cell phone now. It's like it's so easy to download free pictures and print them that if you say to somebody, hey, I've got a great picture of Bollinger Mill, I can sell you a print for a couple hundred dollars. They're like, no, I can, I can get one off the internet for free. You know, so it, I love doing it, but it, it's obviously not something that uh, is going to be easily monetized. I would put it that way. I'd love to spend a whole year in... Alaska and not like in Anchorage but in central Alaska because it's really beautiful like around Fairbanks and uh, Denali. Well the other thing is I really do want to take one more trip down the Colorado River before I get too old and there's a couple of spots on my first trip that we didn't get to. That's like a 10-day trip so that takes a lot of um, planning but that's another thing on my bucket list is the return to the Grand Canyon through the down the Colorado River. One of the shots that I'm proudest of, and people inevitably when they see it, they're like, wow, you got some really lucky light that morning. Yeah, I did, but it was the fourth time I went out there. I camped in Moab in the winter, which was really cold, but every morning I would get up and drive about 40 miles and then hike out to this overlook to get this certain shot. And the light was terrible for the first three mornings. And finally, like on the fourth morning, I got there and the light was perfect. And so my lesson there is sometimes what looks like a really lucky shot was just me lugging the camera and the tripod out there four mornings in a row until I finally got it to work right. It, it looks like skill, but it's not skill, it's just perseverance.